Hey hey! Welcome to Half the Battle! And welcome back to Toy Art Talk! Now, I'm doing these in the order of toys I've already reviewed, so the Arrow Viper and the Condor should be up next, but I don't have the box of that. Hell, I don't even have a Condor. And I'm not comfortable talking about the art if I don't physically have it. So, the next toy on the list that I do have the art for is Airtight. So meet the Airtight card. This art was released in 1985 and it's an original work. As usual, I'll be looking at the European packaging, French in this case, since that's the one I have. The only difference in art is that the background explosion looks digitized, while the American one looks more traditional. Anyway, this is a really good picture from the golden age of G.I. Joe. It's highly detailed. In fact, maybe a little too detailed when you compare it to the actual toy. The device on his chest is far more intricate than on the toy itself, but the biggest difference is in the weapon. While the... um... look, I'm just gonna call it a vacuum cleaner because that's what it bloody looks like. The vacuum cleaner is just black plastic. The art shows it's silver, with a wooden handle and grip no less. Also, there's a strap that the actual toy is lacking. So why is that? Well, it's probably a combination of a few factors. For one thing, the artist may have been working off a prototype toy or even prototype sketches. For another thing, there is such a thing as artistic license, which could have been at work here. I kinda wish they used that license on the Sky Striker though and had removed a lever. I wouldn't even call this false advertising. I mean, anybody who picked up the carded figure could see the actual toy right next to the drawing. As far as the actual drawing is concerned, there's some nice work with light and shadow going on, like on the helmet and this hand. It really helps to bring the character to life. The only bit of criticism I have is that it's difficult to tell if Airtight is supposed to be running or kneeling. I eventually settled on kneeling, even though his left knee is higher than his right foot. I suppose it's difficult to portray a figure kneeling when he's in a digital explosion void with no ground beneath him. And that about wraps it up. And yeah, this is another great piece of art by Hector Garrido. But once again, since I have the card here anyway, let's take a look at all of it. Like I said earlier, this is a French card, so guess what? You're getting a dose of foreign file card fun this week too. That's right, a double feature, you lucky bastards! No, it has nothing to do with the fact that it would be a very short video otherwise. First of all, there's the French name. It's not a translation of the word airtight, but its own unique thing. His code name is Oxygen. Go on, try to guess what it means. Yeah, no prizes for figuring out, he's just called Oxygen. By the way, as an aside, in Dutch he's called Gasmasker. Which translates to gas mask. Not very creative. The file card itself is more or less a direct translation of the American one. But there are two interesting differences. One on the packaging and one on the file card. On the packaging, the American card says hostile environment. But on the French one, it says guerre chimique or chemical warfare. And that's a bit of a problem. A hostile environment trooper is somebody who goes into a contaminated area to sort it out. That's what they were going for with Airtight anyway. But with a chemical warfare trooper, you think more of a guy who causes the contamination. And since chemical warfare is, um, frowned upon to say the least, that would make Oxygen a war criminal. Huh, I wonder if there's any way to make this worse. Of course there is, otherwise I wouldn't have posed the question. I did mention there was a second difference on the file card this time. You see, while Airtight is from Connecticut, Oxygen is from Munich, West Germany. Yeah, you'll note that G.I. Joe wasn't called a real American hero over here, but rather Heroes Sans Frontières, meaning Heroes Without Borders, or International Heroes in Dutch. As a complete aside, I'm sure the Doctors Without Borders organization was just thrilled to have a military toy line with a name so close to theirs. So what with the team being international heroes? Some of them had their places of birth changed to European countries like Germany. Well, West Germany as this was before the wall fell. 
I'm guessing they chose to make him German since his real name was Kurt Schnorr, both in America and here. And that sure already sounds German anyway. The problem, of course, is that now you have a German soldier who's an expert in chemical warfare. Yeah, no matter how you slice it, those optics aren't good. They aren't good at all. This version of the character might as well be a cobra. And on that bombshell, we'll end for today. That was Airtight, the card art and foreign file court fun edition. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody. And hey, why not like, share and subscribe if that's your thing.